system verilog interfaces so system verilog is a hardware description and verification language used in the design and verification of digital systems interfaces are a fundamental construct in system verilog offering a structured way to define the communication between modules or blocks within a design so in this video we will explore what interfaces are why they are used their benefits and also we will discuss few examples so before moving ahead just see these two figures so what difference you can see here if you want you can just pause the video and try to understand the differences well in verilog we use ports and signals to make connections but this is not possible for complex designs like chips and socs at soc level we basically instantiate ips and we make a lot of connections so there will be hundreds of ips in an soc and to connect those ics you need to make approximately thousands of connections so if you are going to make all those connections in terms of ports and signals then uh, uh, it's going to be a very uh, error prone and time consuming so in order to avoid that we use interface interface is nothing but bunch of signals and we don't really need to connect everything port by port we make connections something like one to one connections so that you can also understand by this figure the first figure is a kind of port to port connection so it's looking very messy and a lot of connections are there so in real time whenever you write the code and make this much connection it's very obvious that uh, your uh, code will throw an error even if there is a single mistake however the right side image you can see here we are using interface and it's looking very neat and clean so the first figure is without interface that is port to port connections which is not uh, preferable in case of uh, uh, big projects or in case of socs the right one is with interface which is more preferable so now we will understand in detail what is interface so an interface in system verilog is a user defined data type that encapsulates a group of signals and methods that represent the interaction between different modules or blocks in a digital design it serves as an abstraction that simplifies the connection between different parts of a design and making the code more organized modular and easier to understand interfaces define the communication protocol between different modules helping to separate the logical functionality from the physical implementation they act as a contract ensuring that modules adhere to a specific set of rules when interfacing with each other the interface construct enclosed between the keywords interface and end interface encapsulates the communication between design blocks and between design and verification blocks allowing a smooth migration from abstract system level design through successive refinement down to the lower level register transfer and the structural views of the design so by encapsulating the communication between the blocks the interface constructs are facilitates design reuse so now we will see uh, why interfaces are used so the first one is modularity interfaces promote modularity by abstracting the communication between different parts of a design this makes it easier to develop and maintain complex systems next is reusability once defined interfaces can be reused across multiple modules and reducing the redundancy and minimizing errors so this is especially valuable in large designs so it is always suggested if you are writing the code just try to reuse uh, your code your interface again and again this will uh, uh, save your time and also uh, will make you a pro level of coder <laughs> next is abstraction interfaces abstract the underlying details of how signals are implemented providing a high level views of the communication protocol this separation of concerns enhances the code readability and reduces the errors another one is communication protocol so interfaces define a standardized communication protocol ensuring that modules connected through the interface exchange information correctly next one is ease of verification 
In the context of verification, interfaces simplify the development of test benches. Test benches can communicate with the module under the test using the same interface and making it easier to write the test scenarios. Also notice one thing here. In system Verilog, we use class-based verification environment using OOP, that is object-oriented programming. We will discuss that uh, OOP concept in our upcoming videos. So the complete verification environment is a dynamic object and design, which is the DOT, is a static component. So you cannot directly instantiate the design within the verification environment. So to solve this problem, we create interface and we use interface within the design. Also, we can convert interfaces into the virtual interfaces and can use this virtual one as a dynamic interface with the verification environment. We have already discussed the uh, system Verilog test bench in our second lecture and I have uh, explained in very much detail that how that test bench component works. So to connect that system Verilog test environment with your DUT, you need interface to uh, establish a connection between a static component and a dynamic component because verification is nothing but an entire dynamic environment. Now we will see some benefits of uh, using interfaces. It provides clarity. So interfaces make it clear how modules interact with each other, enhancing code readability and understandability. Efficiency. They reduces the efforts required to connect different modules and leading to more efficient design and the verification. Flexibility. Interfaces allow for the changes in the internal implementation of modules without affecting their connections and making it easier to adapt designs to evolving requirements. Error reduction. To standardized communication protocol minimizes the risk of errors in interfacing modules. And also the reusability. So reusing interfaces across the project saves your time and promotes a consistent design methodology. So in next few sections, uh, we will see a test bench connected to an arbiter using individual signals and again using the interface. So you can see here, uh, here is a diagram of top level design including a test bench, arbiter, clock generator and this signal that connect them. So the signals are the request, reset, grant and clock. Clock is given to both the arbiter and the test bench. So you can consider this arbiter as a DUT here and we are trying to connect this DUT with the test bench. So by this we will try to understand how uh, interfaces can ease your effort of coding and make your code look more structured and organized and reduces the chances of errors. So the following code fragments show the elements of connecting an RTL block to a test bench. First is the header for the arbiter model. This uses the Verilog 2001 style port declaration where the type and the directions are in the header. Most of the code and the declarations have been left out for the clarity because obviously if I'll write a very long code here like four to five pages code then it would be very difficult for you to understand the concept. So uh, small small snippets I'll use and try to make you understand how you can use interfaces in your own code. So see here uh, we have started with the module, module and then ARB port. We are uh, trying to write the code for the arbiter. So ARB port and then we have defined all the input output signals. We have taken it as a logic type. The grant, request, reset and the clock. Then in always at posage clock or posage reset, what we are writing here, if reset is high, then 00, 0 is given to the grant or whatever uh, functionality is there, whatever code you have to write, just you can write it down here. The next is test. So the test bench is a module with ports and a small piece of test is shown here. So uh, module test, then uh, we have defined all the input output signals which we have seen in our uh, earlier diagram. Then initial and at posage clock, what we are doing here, uh, 0, 01 is given to the request and we are displaying the value. Then two times we are repeating at posage clock, 0, 01 is uh, if, if grant is not 0, 01, then we are displaying this thing. So this is a normal test bench as we always write. But what I am trying to make you understand is that how uh, a code 
will look if you are not using interface and what changes you need to make when you are using interface so this is a very simple example we are not using any interface then how it would look like that we are discussing here so we have uh, uh, seen the arbiter code we have seen the test code and now this is time to understand the top module so in top module we need to instantiate both the test and the arbiter so module top then logic type all the input output signals that always we have generated the clock and then arb port we have instantiated with all the signals and test t1 with all the signals in module so this is a very normal way of writing the code but what is the problem here you can see in arbiter code also you need to define all the signals here and in real time there would not be two or four signals there are a lot of signals like uh, hundreds or uh, 500 signals are there so the netlists are simple but real design with hundreds of pins require pages of signal and port declaration all these connections can be error prone so as a signal moves through several layers of hierarchy it has to be declared and connected over and over and the worst of all if you just want to add a new signal it has to be declared and connected in multiple files like you have to uh, describe that signal in your arbiter in your test and then again while instantiating that in a top module you have to define that so even just to add a single uh, signal you need to make so many changes in your code which will be really time consuming and hectic for you so system Verilog interfaces can help in each of these cases. So now we will see the interface construct. Here uh, we have connected the test bench and the arbiter via interface. So designs are so complex that even the communication between them may need to be separated out into separate entities. So to model this system Verilog uses the interface construct that you can think as an intelligent bundle of wires. They contain the connectivity, synchronization and optionally the functionality of the communication between two or more blocks. So they connect design blocks or the test benches. As you can see in this figure, we are connecting our design block and the test bench via this interface. So the first improvement is to bundle the wires together into an interface block. This figure shows the test bench and the arbiter communicating using an interface. Note how the interface extends into the two blocks representing the driver and the receivers that are functionally part of both the test and the DUT. The clock can be part of the interface or a separate port. So a simplest interface is just a bundle of non-directional signals. Use logic so you can uh, drive the signals from the procedural statements. This is uh, uh, instantiated in the top module and connected as follows. So here you can see we have defined our interface. So interface and interface. Here we have given the name of that interface and then the clock which is given as an input here. Then all the signals we have to define here. So we have taken here logic type, grant, request and reset. So here we have defined our interface. In real time there will be hundreds of signal and you have to list down all those signals here in your interface module. Then this is the top module and in this top module uh, earlier we were instantiating only this arbiter and the test bench but this time we have to instantiate the arbiter test bench and the interface all the three so module top then bit type clock we have defined here clock generation and then the three instantiation interface arbiter and the test arb if is nothing but the name which we have given to the arbiter while instantiating that in test bench you refer to a signal in an interface by making a hierarchical reference using the instance name so arb if dot request so request is our signal but since we are using the interface and the name is arb if so wherever we will use the signals we need to uh, specify it by the uh, hierarchical reference that is the uh, arb if dot request as you can see here the test bench code module test and then uh, we have written here the uh, interface then at posage clock we have written earlier but now what we are writing at posage arb if dot clock because this clock is coming from where that interface that is why arb if dot request so this is uh, i was talking about that hierarchical 
uh, reference the same changes you have to make here whatever test bench you were writing instead of that you need not to define all the signals in the test instead of that just write this uh, interface and make this change in the all signals so interface signals should always be driven using non blocking assignments lastly in the device under the test the arbiter that uses an interface instead of ports so earlier we were writing all the ports here but now we only need to define that interface so you can see how much your uh, code writing part has reduces now so always at pause edge arb if dot clock or pause edge arb if dot reset and then whatever your code is there you can just write it down so you can see an immediate benefit even on the small device the connections become cleaner and less prone to mistakes if you wanted to put a new signal in an in an interface you would just have to add in in your interface definition and the modules that actually used it so you you would not have to change any modules such as the top uh, that just pass the interfaces through so this language feature greatly reduces the chance of wiring errors so i hope now the concept is clear to you uh, if you want to write your code by using the interface just define all the signals inside the interface definition then write the code for your design for your test by using that interface uh, and instantiate all the three in your top module so this is all about the interface next we are going to discuss mod ports so in system very log a mod port that is module port is a construct used within the interfaces to define different sets of signal and their directions for the communication with the modules earlier how we are defining uh, our uh, interface just by uh, introducing all the signals but it would be even better if you use mod ports in your interface definition it will make a clear visibility that uh, in which module what are the signal coming as a input and what are the signals coming as a output so as a coder you have to aware about each and every module uh, and their input outputs so this mod port will be very much helpful in that case Mod ports allow you to specify which signals within an interface are accessible and how they can be accessed by modules that uses the interface. They provide a flexible and structured way to define the communication interfaces between the modules and the interfaces. So to restrict interface access within a module there are mod port lists with the directions declared within the interface and the keyword mod port indicates that the uh, directions are declared as if inside the module. So you can see here in this example simply you have to define the interface interface end interface then here you have to give a name and the input uh, clock which you are giving then uh, we are defining all the signals here you have to define as it is after that you can use mod port and write all your modules here with the direction of the signals like in our test output is request reset and input is grant and clock in dut input is request reset clock output is grant in monitor input is request grant reset clock so likewise uh, how much modules are there in your code you can just define here in your interface with all the input output signals this will give you even more clear and structured view uh, to your code so this is about the mod ports so modules that use this interface can specify which mod port they want to use and allowing them to access only the signals specified by that particular mod port so mod ports provide a clear and structured way to define communication interfaces between the modules and the interfaces promoting code readability reusability and maintainability in system verilog designs so guys this is about today's lecture we have discussed the interfaces I hope it is clear to you if you have any doubt do let me know in the comment box also don't forget to join our community vlsi point on telegram there you can discuss your small small doubts with your peers also let me know how the system very law course is going on if you have any suggestions then you can tell me except that uh, upload the videos more frequently because guys this is not possible for me to uh, upload all the videos at a time but yes it is my promise that videos will be uploaded on weekly basis and i'll try to complete this course as soon as possible so do subscribe vlsi point show your support and we are all here for you if you like today's video give it a thumbs up and in next video we will discuss object oriented programming which is a very important concept of system verilog so see you soon